in the cemetery, farm savings down. Hand all coming down the road, he's farm savings down. Wanna get you, I'm down, wanna get you, baby. Wanna get you, I'm down, run down to the hill. Wanna get you, I'm down, wanna get you, baby. Wanna get you, I'm down, run down to the hill. I'm Dan Haggerty. I'd like to welcome you to Mountain People. These are my people, and your people too. You know, these folks back here have that mountain spirit. They've been living this way for over hundreds and hundreds of years. A lot of these folks are even related to Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett. There's even Native Americans that live here too. So I want you to stay with us because we're going to show you history in the making. We're going to be making some incredible stews, show you how to make a dulcimer, and even make a little moonshine by the light of the moon. So I'm Dan Haggerty for the Mountain People. We'll be looking for you. Howdy y'all, my name's Doug Elliott and we're here celebrating the biodiversity on the Southern Appalachian Mountains. There are all kinds of plants and animals here. Some of these plants you can use for food, some for medicine, some for all kinds of things. Come on, we'll go out on a little tour here. Let's go, come on. <laughs> Oh, hey, I got an old Appalachian folk riddle for you. High as a house, low as a mouse, got more rooms than anyone's house. What is it? Can you think about that? Here's another hint. Hey, diddle die, hey, diddle diddle. You can look all day, there's a possum in the middle. So you know what that'd be? That'd be the black walnut. Now what's high about a house, high as a house? Look up there. Look at that big tree, that's high as a house. And look, here's a black walnut down here. Low as a mouse. Got more rooms than anyone's house? Well, when you crack it open, look inside. Look at that, got all those little cavities in there. Got more rooms than my house, I'll tell you that. The problem is, to get to the nut, has this big old tough husk on it. Now you can take a hammer and you can bust it open with your hands or stomp on it, but Appalachian tradition is you get you a bucket full of them, pour them out in the driveway, and then just drive right over them. And, uh, and then that removes the husk, and then you can crack them later. to have this house. We bought this in 1985 and it's certainly the oldest house in the valley. I think it comes from the 1880s. It was originally a stucco little story and half house and we've added on to it twice and former owners have added on to it two or three other times. So in addition to raising three children here, uh, this is home to native ground books and music where we publish uh, books and recordings of Appalachian you know, folklore, music, and home cooking. And uh, we enjoy uh, this great rustic house for that. And then across the way, we have a wonderful old um, uh, historic log cabin. And that's where I teach my music classes, teach people banjo, fiddle, guitar, mandolin, how to sing the old songs and ballads. And then Barbara, my wife Barbara Swell, teaches historic cooking classes in the retro kitchen. We have a uh, 1927 home comfort wood cook stove in there and so the whole place is just perfect for the kind of thing we do. Ooh, the fall garden's looking good today. That rain sure has helped. <gasps> Look at that! I think these candy roasters are ready to be picked. This is a really special squash. It only grows here in these western North Carolina mountains and it's perfect for pie. What I love most about pie, the 
The eating of the pie is great, but what's even better is that it brings people to the table. So bring your friends and your loved ones to the table and let's have some pie. National Historic Trail right here in front. I started learning the story of that National Historic Trail and telling a story to any of the listeners that would come through the orchard. And I found out that I was telling a story by name about my great, 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 great grandfather. And I had no inkling that he was my great, 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 great grandfather. And that coincidence cemented us in the purpose of preserving not only the physical beauty here, which is considerable, but the apples and the history and the music and the culture that's disappearing from this place in the mountains. If you're gonna make apple butter, you can't take the apple just like that. You gotta peel it and core it and slice it. And that's pretty hard if you have to do it all by hand. This is the way they used to do it. They'd put the apple down here and the peeling and coring would come through this and the thing would come out in a lot of pieces at least, whether it was clean or not. But this is the way we do it now. That whole thing can go in this little box right here. My name is Sonny Ledford. My bloodline name is Usquetsiwon. In my language, that means they wore something on their head or in their hair. I am a full blood Cherokee and I come from the Bird Clan. I'm also an official ambassador of the Eastern Band, me and six other gentlemen. Now, I teach the culture, which is very important because I have to pass it down to the younger ones. I also have to teach those my own, my own people. This way, this culture continues to go on and be lived as close to it as possible. Hi, I'm Doug Trantham, and I play the hammer dulcimer. We discovered the banjo probably in the Civil War. Mountain people love the banjo. It became the primary instrument and still today reigns supreme here, along with the fiddle. I grew up on a subsistence farm about six to eight miles north of town. We made all of the food that we ate. We made all of the implements that we used. Uh, my mother was a very gifted craftsperson, so I grew up with the culture of, of making things. In 1959, I started seriously building instruments, not to sell for commercial purposes, but for use in the, in the family. I have been uh, selling commercially for a while, but that's not the motivation. My family all has the instruments we've built, and they've helped build a number of the instruments in the shop. They love music. It, it's a part of our family. We, we make the music because we love it, it's, it's for us. There is a strong oral tradition of ballads here in the mountains, it's persisting still today. Uh, many of those uh, old songs are, tr are tragic in nature and, and very uh, lengthy in, uh, in their story. I'm Dan Haggerty from Mountain People. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.